Hello, my name is Brandon Carson. Um, if you see me on the streets, you can call me B. And this is an outpour of my story. I, I knew I was gay when I was about three years old. <laughs> no, but no, honestly, um, I'm by definition of what they would call a gold star gay. I've never been attracted to women. I've never really been into women, like, you know, like, you know, like ever. And um, I kind of try to force it. And, you know, I, I've forced my way into trying to get a girlfriend and trying to be attracted to, you know, women and everything. Didn't happen. Uh, um, I definitely um, began to come into myself more so at the latter end of middle school and into high school. Um, and, you know, that's where crushes and my infatuation for men, like in general, just kind of went from adolescent to dog and heat. Like it, it just got to a point, you know what I'm saying? It just, it just got to a point, okay? Uh, <laughs> I remember my first celebrity crush was Shamar Moore. Um, I would have to go to my grandmother's place um, and kind of wait for my mom to get off work, you know, in between time when I would get off school and um, when I would, when I would get out of school, I should say, and, you know, get off the bus and everything. I would wait at my grandmother's house and she would always have the stories on. And that man, that's a fine man. That was, a, he was fine then, he's fine now. I came out to my mom when I was in college. My freshman year of college, I picked up my cell phone and I texted her a very long dissertation of me coming out. And simultaneously, my brother was kind of going through a personal situation that resulted in him outing me to my dad. And um, my dad called me while I was texting my mom. Very crazy. And um, they kind of found out at the same time. Um, it, it, it was very, 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 very weird. It was extremely like out of the sky. Like it, it literally kind of just like happened. Um, but you know, it was very necessary. Um, and here I am. What's interesting about my coming out story is that I was perfectly um, okay with coming out to um, my dad more than I was with my mom. I had a deeper connection with my mom and uh, my mom was the one who uh, practically fathered me as I grew up. And um, I actually felt like me coming out to my dad was a slight to him at the time. Like we didn't have the greatest relationship, you know, we didn't really have, we didn't really see eye to eye, even though he was paying for my tuition, we just didn't really, we didn't really see it for each other at the time. So, um, you know, now things are great, but at that time, my relationship with my mom is much better than the one with my dad, but at the same time, um, coming out to her was just a little bit harder because she expected a different level of strength. Um, as a black gay man, we have to go through a lot of different stages of trauma to understand that emotionally we are scarred, all of us, me, you, everybody. It's, 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 it's hard to stomach and it's a big, you know, pill to swallow, but mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of how the cookie crumbles. I mean, I, to this day, my mom isn't 100% comfortable with my lifestyle. Her not necessarily connecting with my lifestyle um, definitely is detrimental to my relationship with her because I would want to be able to feel like I can tell her things and let, you know, you know, things are open and we can have conversations, but um, growing up, I will say that my mom worked, you know, three, four jobs on average. Mm -hmm. And um, for the most part, as a child, I would see her in passing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I we, we didn't really um, have chances to engage and to be able to have conversations and to be able to have, you know, those moments of um, certain types of nurture. And uh, I, I mean, I, I, it had everything to do with her providing for the family and, and making sure that we were good and that we were great. Um, but at the same time, emotionally, it kind of scarred me. 
I um, am a preacher's kid. Well, a preacher's grandkid, actually. My grandfather's reverend. And um, I was a part of the Southern Baptist, uh, you know, association, church, that whole gambit, right? And um, I was practically forced into public speaking, which turned into me becoming, you know, very prevalent in a lot of the Christmas plays and the Easter plays. Like I was Jesus down. It, it, it started to become fun after some time. Um, and then it got to a point where we went from doing it in a small church to doing it in an arena because um, my church specifically, we would be a part of these national competitions that um, we would win sometimes actually. And uh, basically what would happen was um, we would, it, it would be like a competition type of situation. I was a part of the great debate. That was the biggest thing that we've done. And, um, um, at that time, that was the biggest thing. And then I went into doing um, oratories and oratorical competitions. And um, I went into public speaking more after that and um, got into high school and decided that I wanted to go into drama and really focus on it there. But when I got to college, um, I didn't necessarily see a lane for me to you know, act at the school that I was at because I mean, I was, I was at Xavier. And the closest thing they had to me being in front of someone's camera was broadcast journalism. So I picked up broadcast journalism. Um, from there, I learned how to edit. I learned how to read off a teleprompter. I learned how to put together a package, a news package. Um, I was giving you a very much so broadcast voice at the greatest times of the day. You know, I guess I, I, I learned all the great things, but I just didn't want to be on the news. I wanted to be on like e-news, like entertainment news, because I feel like CNN and Fox and MSNBC, it's just, it's just very, very, it's late, it's, it's a little sleepy. Serious and necessary, but I just didn't feel like it was for me. And um, I decided to focus on my acting career. So the first thing I got into was a background, um, a feature background role on MTV Scream um, TV series that they did back in, I think it was 2016. Um, and I filmed that in the spring. I was a Branson student, so I was in like nine of the 10 episodes in the first season, like seven in the, I don't know how many episodes they had after the second season because, I mean, after the first season because the second season was canceled, but you know, whatever. But I um, knew after the first take when I did, when I was on, the, on that set, um, seeing the cameras and seeing the people and seeing the environment and how serious everyone was and how it's such um, a project. Like you, when you really see the behind the scenes of everything, it really becomes promising to you. Like you feel like you could just do anything when it comes to that, you know? And after my first take, my girl told me to walk from point A to point B. It was a finished thing, it was a done deal. And they said, you know, and you know, rolling, rolling, tested, they went in right into it came out of it and they were just like chicken in the gate because that's when you know they were looking into it to see if that's the final take after the final take i was like oh, bitch i can do this all day every day all day every day they treated them like they were roid i probably think that was because they was white i remember i had a conversation with my mom about this whole project and about about him and about um everything the first episode had dropped and she watched it and she reached out to me and um i was extremely nervous because i was just like oh my god like this show is a lot anybody who's seen about him it's, it's it's out there and for my mom to be seeing me the first time on camera like this she's just like my son has moved away and now he's just sucking dick on camera but you know like that's that's <laughs> But no, like honestly, truly, um, from that conversation, and then my mom was just like, yeah, I don't have any problems with it. I just wish that the episodes were longer. And I was just like, wait, what? You said what now? Huh? Who? 
It's like, yeah, I just wish they were longer. Like, I, I wish it was more of this and that. Next, I was like, I'm just like, what? My mom was gay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but I was, I was extremely happy. Um, it made me feel great. Um, and then, like a week later, I got a call from my dad, and he told me to change my last name because I was being disrespectful to the family. And um, you know, my my government last name is Jordan. Um, I hope no one's looking for me. But I, you know, I, I decided to change my last name because my dad said that me being a part of about him was disrespecting the family. I knew it was big. I, I, I knew that it had gotten big when I um, went cross country to New York City and we had toured the finale. You know, we had did great things. We had, you know, did great numbers. We had bridge the gap between the younger audience um, and, you know, the, the older audience that didn't necessarily feel like either really understood the other, you know what I'm saying? And um, it was great to have not only the respect of guys who were 45 and older, but the respect of guys who were 18 between 30. Like that's, it's, it's, that's a, it was huge. That was a really, really big thing. And we sold out that theater three times over. Three times. It sat 75 people. And then you had extra people just standing around. And that that was like crazy. That was just, that was, that was crazy. And to this day, people still hit me up about, about it. I have a underwear store, boutique, and a line. Um, that's currently moving, currently shaking the table, as K. Michelle would say. Um, and it's it's doing great, you know what I'm saying? So definitely get in on that. That's some good shit, that's some great stuff. It makes you feel sexy, it makes you feel secure, it makes you feel like you wanna bust it open for your man or bust your man down. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Get you some great underwear. It's amazing underwear, and that's Carson & Co. Um, I'm also starting a production company and my first project is currently in development. So we got a lot of stuff going on. I feel like I was in front of the camera for so many different times with so many different types of people. So now it's time to, you know, take that torch, carry that motherfucker, and just pass it off to somebody else. Give somebody else an opportunity and, you know, spread my wings. Coming from such a small town in Louisiana, I'm born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But my mom relocated to Baker. It's like five, you know, minutes outside of the city limits. But you know, she wanted to be away from the, you know, ruckus and everything. I'm coming from such a small place, and um, being where I am today, it wasn't very easy. And um, I know a lot of people who think that this is something that you can kind of skip into and that, you know, things kind of just happen, but it, it's, 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 it's different. You know, you prepare yourself for greatness when you know that you're great. Um, I, I dealt with a lot of backlash from about him. I dealt with a lot of backlash from being expressive with my body and being open with being naked, you know, for the picture, being naked for the moment, for, you know, the concept. And um, it's costed me so many relationships, both personal um, and both in business. But when something is for you, you take it. It speaks to you and you listen to it, you know? It resonates with you. If I can give my younger self advice that I know now that I didn't know when I was younger. Hmm. Brace yourself. <laughs> because you are on a road that you don't understand, but your purpose is one that everybody needs to tune into. Um, you're going to be looked at as the odd one. You're going to be looked at as the different one. But sit in it and relish in it because people notice you and people see you for exactly who you are and exactly how you do things. Just breathe. And put your seatbelt on, child, because it's riding bumpy.
I'm Brandon Carson Jordan, and this is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Oh.